So are these the best binoculars to take with you on your bike birthing adventure? That's right, today we're gonna talk binoculars because life is varied and there's so many things to do on the bike other than just punish yourself, like look at birds or nature, all that good stuff. Welcome back, Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling, riding party pace, going bike fishing, and bike birthing, apparently, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. So in this video, I'm going to review the Knox standard issue uh, binoculars, also known as the Instagram binoculars, and compare them to two other binoculars I've been using since I've been getting into biking and birding. And hopefully it'll, it'll give you a sense if these are right for you. So I know what you're thinking, why bring binoculars with you on a bike ride? For those of you that are familiar with the channel, you guys know I love to combine my varied interests while bicycling. So initially I was interested in using the Knox mostly for creating art. But during my first outing with these binoculars, uh, when we went to ride the Trail of the Quarter Lanes a couple weeks ago, I found them just super fun. I used them to spot some fish, to look at birds, which then got me curious as to what those specific birds were. And so that totally started me on this whole trajectory of slowly getting into birding, and since then I have purchased other binoculars. This pair of knocks, again for complete transparency, was sent to me to review. And to be honest, I didn't think I'd really get into using binoculars on the bike, but as you can see, it really did spark uh, an honest interest. So some basic stats about the Knox. Uh, these retail at $89. The magnification is eight times magnification and the objective lens is 25. So that's why it says eight by 25. In comparison, these Vortex uh, Diamondbacks are eight by 42. So similar magnification at eight times but they do have a larger objective lens, so hence the larger number. And these Nikons are eight by 30. So all the same magnification, but the objective lens differs. And how that affects the image is that the larger the objective lens, the brighter the image, because more light is transmitted to your pupils. The knots are also waterproof, just like these two other binoculars. They're also air purged with nitrogen gas, and this prevents any kind of condensation and fogging up. So similar to these two more expensive binoculars. These weigh in at a fairly svelte 12 ounces for small binos like this. In comparison, this pair weighs about 20 ounces and this one is 15 ounces. So in terms of lightweight and portability, these actually do a pretty good job. I think probably the most unique thing about these binoculars, as you can tell, is the color and just the general design. The Knox have kind of a geometric pattern uh, you know, they come in fun, bright colors. And the surface is this texturized rubber grip, which makes it easy to hold on to, but also protects it from uh, kind of bumps and scrapes and all that stuff. I'd say this generally feels really good in the hand. It's a nice solid grip. The hinge, which separates the two halves, uh, feels fairly high quality. It's not sloppy and loose at all. And the focusing ring actually has a nice damp feel to it. So all the moving parts, none of it is sloppy. If there is any point of criticism on the moving parts is that the right diopter adjustment, a little bit stiff, and sometimes I find it pushes the eye cups up. Again, if you're new to using binoculars, if you don't wear glasses, you want to raise the eye cups here. And if you do, you want to view it primarily with the eye cups down. I think perhaps the main value proposition of these uh, binoculars is its styling and its bright colors. Hear me out, I know it sounds silly and it may just be for you know Instagram cred, but I think there is actually some value into having uh, some binoculars that don't look super tactical. So let's say you're touring, you're birding in the city or in the suburbs and you pull out a pair of binoculars and you start you know, trying to ID a bird. I think if you did that with something that looks like real binoculars, people would be kind of sketched out, you know? They're gonna be thinking that you're, you know, casing the joint. But with the Knox, since they do look rather toy-like and aren't tactical looking, I feel like they're a lot less threatening than you know these Nikons or even these Vortex binoculars. For some of you guys, that may provide no value whatsoever, but for me, I think it's actually pretty cool and unique. And again, the tough uh, rubberized exterior makes it really tough and you can just toss this in your bag. And speaking of bag, what does this come with when you buy it? It comes with the binoculars, it comes with this small strap, and you also get this uh, cloth bag to kind of carry it as well as a lens cloth. So there's no hard case provided. Uh, another kind of emission when compared to other binoculars is that it has no eye cup protection. So with these Vortex, 
Uh, you know, there is this big plastic thing that protects the eye cups that you view through, as well as these drop down plastic covers that protect the objective lens. Okay, so let's talk about probably the most important part about binoculars, and that is the optics. Are they any good? How do they compare with other binoculars? So magnification is eight by, which is your pretty standard magnification. So it does that pretty well. In terms of sharpness, it's actually pretty good. You're not gonna be resolving super fine detail like some higher end binoculars, but for a casual user, for someone that just wants to survey the landscape, you're not going hunting or, or aren't super serious about you know, bird identification, then these binoculars are good enough. I think where they suffer when compared to uh, more expensive binoculars is uh, they have a little bit more chromatic aberration. If an object is backlit, it's a little bit harder to resolve the detail. And generally the image isn't as bright, but part of that is because of the objective lens at only 25 is much smaller than something that has a 42 objective lens or even a 30 objective lens. I think two other cons optically uh, when compared to other binoculars is the field of view is actually pretty narrow. So for example, while these have similar magnification, you just see more around the image with both the vortex and these Nikons. So these two have a field of view of about eight degrees and uh, they don't list the field of view of these, but my guess would be it's, it's around seven degrees. So a little bit on the narrow side, uh, not a big deal if you're just looking at the scenery. But if you are trying to find a bird in a thicket, it's a little bit tough because you don't see much of the surrounding image. Another downside is the close focus. It's actually pretty far away. You can't really focus on something unless it's uh, at least 13 feet uh, far away from you. So it's a bit of a bummer if you do get lucky and the bird lands nearby and you're, and you're trying to glass it and you can't really get, get it in focus unless it's at least 13, 15 feet away from you. Not an issue, again, if you're gonna be using it to just survey the scenery, but you know, if you're a bird nerd, that might be a problem. So who are these binoculars for? I think if you're a casual user and are traveling, then these are definitely for you. Or even if you have nicer binoculars and just want like a everyday carry, a beater pair, if you will, that you can just toss in your bag without worrying too much about it because they're not super precious, then these are also for you. But probably not the best if you're a super picky bird nerd and need something that resolves fine details and colors in really challenging situations, then you should probably look elsewhere. At $89, it is not dirt cheap, but in the world of binoculars, it's actually fairly affordable. Just to give you a sense of price range, there are high-end binoculars like Swaros, which cost anywhere between a thousand to two thousand dollars for the same magnification. Or there's something like this. These are the Vortex uh, Diamondbacks, something you can pick up at your, your local REI. And these are about 220. So if you're new to the world of binoculars, again, these may seem a little bit pricey, but uh, you know that there's a wide range of, of cost and quality. I will say I will credit these knocks to sparking my interest in birding in the first place. So they're definitely good enough to do that. Even though I have picked up two other nicer pairs of binoculars, I still take these out pretty often. They live in my bike bag or I'll take this uh, when I go fishing because it has good enough quality. You know, it's not so expensive where it feels super precious and it's just, fun. But that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think. Do any of you guys carry binoculars with you on your bike rides? Are there any other bike burgers out there? Let me know. And I promise the next review will be something bike related. But as always, keep the supple side down.